Good morning, YouTube. Thank you for watching this episode of the Trucker Josh Vlogs. I am Zachary Hill from Hills on the Road of Life, and today, on this Road of Life, I'm riding through a rut. Everybody, confused. Slept at the customer, right? And uh, it's because I wanted to be loaded first thing in the morning. Shh, I'm telling a story. I wanted to be loaded first thing in the morning, right? So I made sure I was here first thing in the morning and went and read their sign and it said gate opens at 7 a.m. No entry before then. Okay, cool. 7 a.m. Sounds good to me. So uh, I woke up at uh, 630. And I looked over to the gate. I'm like, okay, there it is. It's still closed. And then I look over beside me and one of the trucks that was parked beside me for the night is gone. Like, huh? Where'd he go? He was empty, so it's not like he was loaded and left. He had to get loaded first. Like, huh? Where'd he go? Right, Diesel? We were both confused, so I walked Diesel, get myself ready. And then all of a sudden, I, I, I see across the yard over there. He's inside the gate already. What? How did he get in there? So I scramble, get all my stuff ready, get, you know, get get the truck ready to go, finish up with diesel. And then I quickly go to the gate and I push the button and sure enough, the gate opens, but it was exactly 7 a.m. So I'm like, all right, cool. Well, I'm right on time. I don't know how that guy got in, but I'm right on time. There's just one guy in front of me somehow. Okay. I go around the yard and I get uh, to the place where we line up to get loaded. There's three trucks in here already. Three of them. How did they get in here before 7 a.m.? Obviously, the sign is wrong. The sign says no entry before 7 a.m. And I got to the gate actually at 6.59. Three people are in here before me. Three trucks. That means it's going to take a lot longer for me to get loaded because there's only two bays to tarp. So they'll load the first two and those two will go into the tarping bays, tarp their loads. And then me and this guy in front of me here, the third guy, I'm the fourth. We're going to have to wait for them to finish tarping before we can go in there and tarp. We're only allowed to tarp in the tarping bay. All right, I showed you. Uh, it's really fancy. How do they get in here? Apparently, the sign is flexible. No entry before 7 a.m., but uh, sometimes entry before 7 a.m. They haven't started loading the guys in front of me yet. So, obviously, they only start loading after 7 a.m., but you can get into the yard before 7 a.m. Interesting. Good to know. Good to know. Next time, I guess I'll be at the gate at 6.30. Well, then again, that guy was in here before 6.30. Oh. Well, I'm number four. Number four. So we're probably not going to get delivered today yet. I'll probably deliver it tomorrow morning. We're going down to Brainerd, Minnesota. By the time I'm out of here, it'll probably be uh, too late to deliver today. Huh. Oh well. Now we know. there to line up better with the top of the load this time I got it straight but uh, I was in a little bit of a rush there was a guy that pulled in right behind me just as I was tarping the load and he needed the tarp bay to tarp his load so I was in his way so I wanted to hurry up and you know be polite and not take forever so I quickly rushed a little bit and I'm happy with it but uh, you know I'm only going 300 miles with it. I don't want to spend half a day tarping this thing and getting it just perfect. 
just to go like down the road into Minnesota and take it all off anyway. I'm getting unloaded today yet. The back here you'll see, this is what bothers me the most, but I did get the crease proper on the top there, but not on this side. And this side wraps around a little further than that side. Like I said the other day, we are always our biggest critics. We are our own biggest critics. Well, that's okay. It's doing the job, right? We actually, uh, the driver who was behind me was, I guess, in a bit of a hurry, and he came to help me with my tarps. And that's why this is uneven here. I appreciate the help, so I'm not complaining. But uh, he uh, wasn't as focused as I was on getting it exactly lined up. I don't want to pass off the blame, but sometimes it's just the honest truth. He didn't line this back one up straight for me when he was uh, started tacking it down here, but that's okay. Not a big deal. I appreciate that he came to help. And it's all wrapped up. Oh, this is playing little peekaboo here again. What are you doing to me? What are you doing to me? That's okay. It's always good to help your fellow driver. These tarps don't have to be perfect. They don't have to look perfect. It doesn't matter, this is good. All it's supposed to do is cover the load just in case I run through some rain. It doesn't really need to be tarped. To be perfectly honest with you, this load does not need to be tarped. It's a beautiful sunny day and it's just going 300 miles down the road in a, on a sunny day. It doesn't need to be tarped, but they want it tarped, so Customer wants, customer gets. Their load gets tarped. This would be more so for uh, winter time when there's a lot of salt and debris on the road. You wouldn't want your uh, your lumber arriving all full of road salt and road grime and stuff, right? So that's okay. I don't mind tarping, and especially there, they have those fancy tarp machines that I showed you on Monday. Makes it very easy. So there's nothing to complain about. That's the load though. Nice little Christmas present on its way down to Brainerd, Minnesota from Kenora, Ontario. I just stopped here real quick. Needed to get a video uploaded and I just wanted to get that going back there. I have a mobile Wi-Fi so everywhere I go I have pretty good Wi-Fi. Uh, either Canada or the States. It works on both sides of the border. Uh, that helps a lot with what I do here on YouTube. And I had to make sure I had my passport ready and all documentation and everything else ready because I'm gonna get to the border right away. I'm just outside of Fort Francis, Ontario on the Canadian side. We're about to cross onto the US side, so I am now ready, prepared. Diesel, you ready? You got your passport? What's this? It's a paper towel here. That's not a passport, man. They're not gonna accept that. You can't just write Lord of All Weasels on a napkin. Okay, we all we all gotta learn sometime. You're 11 years old now. You gotta show them your own passport, okay? When you're crossing the border with pets, in all seriousness, jokes aside, uh, you need to have uh, proof with you of their vaccinations, uh, rabies and whatnot. Uh, the way you get that is you go to your vet and you get them to print off a record of the vaccinations, and they have to be up to date and current. I've never been asked for these records at the border before, but if they do request them, you do have to have them on hand to give over to them just to say, hey, he's, he's up to date on his shots. Just like me, right? You gotta pass our ham up to date, all up to date. Nosy people, right? Nosy people. What are my dog's medical records to you? Diesel, you're always up to date. Okay, anyways, let's go to America.
tarps off of here quick as we can and we'll pull inside take our straps off diesel you're gonna do that part right got to make yourself useful you're not just here for a free ride are you thought you worked for kibble all right gotta get my vest on I got this fan. I usually use this for night. I clipped it onto my dashboard here to help dry me off. I was just soaked in sweat. And then in the back there, I don't know if you can see it underneath back there. That's a built-in Kenworth fan that I have in the truck. I have it pointed down at diesel, blowing air on him, keeping him cool. Can't have the truck idling inside here, obviously. I've done all my work, I've got my straps taken off, my tarps taken off, straps taken off, all my equipment put away, tarps rolled up, tied down. Uh, he's just taking the lifts off now, so we should be out of here in about 10 minutes or so. Then I'm heading down to Hutchinson, Minnesota. I have a load there to pick up in the morning, and it's going back to Manitoba, to a town near the border on 75 called Latalier what kind of freight this would be it doesn't say on here I rarely know I only figure out what I'm hauling once I get there hopefully it's not too complicated <laughs> whatever we'll get her done we'll tie her down tomorrow and we'll head on back home should be back uh, tomorrow <laughs> might even get unloaded tomorrow who knows clean finally got a shower <laughs> Between Kenora and Brainerd, there are no uh, showers that I have an account for. There may be showers at some truck stops that I'm not aware of. I don't do that route often enough to know where all the little ones are. But there's no pile of flying jays, and that's where I always take a shower. So we're here in St. Cloud, Minnesota right now, on the way down to Hutchinson. And I was able to park over at the, the McDonald's in a temporary parking spot. We're allowed to park here, just not overnight. I checked. So I parked here for about an hour, ran into Pilot, and uh, grabbed a shower, cleaned myself up. It felt so good. Now we're gonna get out of here. I'm gonna go to the customer in Hutchinson, so that I'm ready for them first thing in the morning tomorrow. Let's get out of here. And there's the pilot right there. See, so it was just across the street. There's never any parking in this, in this pilot. So if you're going to uh, St. Cloud, Minnesota, you can stop in here and just grab fuel Sometimes, right now, it's just jam-packed with guys parked in the pumps. You see one guy backing out already because there's a guy in front of him that's probably been parked in front of the pumps for an hour. It's risky. I don't fuel here because it's too congested. It's a very small lot, and very often, you get jammed up with people, you know, parking wherever they want. So I usually go to the pilot at exit 100 on I-94 in Minnesota. That's in Alexandria. That exit's a little funny though. You gotta make sure you take the right exit to get on and off the freeway. <laughs> You'll see what I mean when you go there. Or you can look at it on a map. But that parking lot's a lot more usable. It's, it's a big lot and the pumps don't usually get as congested. That's where I usually go. I, I very rarely stop here. I only stop here because this is right on my way to Hutchinson and I was kind of desperate for a shower. I almost didn't find parking, but you know, lucky for me, it worked out this time. Right, Diesel? All right, this is I-94. We're gonna get on I-94 westbound just for a few miles about five miles, seven kilometers. And then we're gonna head down uh, Minnesota 15 southbound, down into Hutchinson. 
not too sure what kind of stuff I'm picking up. By the looks of it, I looked it up on Google. Uh, it looks like it's gonna be some kind of steel parts, steel building materials by the looks of it. We'll find out in the morning. Whatever it is, I'll take it. I found myself a quiet street to park down. Can't really see it. Not much light is being picked up, but there's about two businesses on this street. And that's a dead end that way. All of this is obviously commercial land that's probably for sale. Those lights right there, that's where I'm loading in the morning. So you just go around and the yard is practically a quarter mile that way. They told me I wasn't allowed to park in the gate or on their driveway there. They're like, no, no, you're not allowed to park on our property or in our driveway, we're sorry. They actually suggested I went and parked at Walmart, like, way across town, way over there. And I looked at the map and I saw this, uh, this road going through here. And, uh, I figured, well, that looks like a pretty quiet road, we'll go check it out. Sure enough, yeah, it's a business road, it's like an industrial road. Parking along the sides here, I've seen, uh, cars on Google Maps parking along the sides here. Sure enough, there's no signs here saying no parking. Very quiet street. Street lights. So I gotta park right underneath a street light, which uh, is important to me when you're on these quiet roads. Don't wanna park in the pitch black if you don't have to. You always find a nice light to park under. And big open grass fields for the weasel to run around in. Speaking of, he's in here somewhere. There he is. You see him? Hey, Dizu. <laughs> what are you doing there? All right, let's. One good thing about these steps on these Kenworths is it's a nice, pretty, a low step. So I don't always have to use his fancy steps. One sec here, Diesel. One second. Just let me get all my... This shouldn't be here. Okay, I trust you, buddy. Okay. Good boy. Yep, that pole's yours right there. No, it's going to be our friend. It's going to light us up all night. You go and mark it if you want to. It's going to be a good night. It was a good day, that's for sure. Started in Kenora today. I used up my full 14 hours on my American cycle. Uh, started in Kenora this morning. We got uh, loaded, tarped, got down to Brainerd, got untarped, got unloaded, and made it down to our customer where we're gonna load first thing tomorrow morning. So it, it was a very productive day, very happy with it. We drove about 750 kilometers, I think, which is uh, under 500 miles. And then tomorrow we should be able to make it back into Manitoba. Latalier is just into Manitoba. So I'm thinking, I don't know if I'm going to be able to get there before end of business day. I'm going to try. But if not, I'll just sleep right in Latalier. They have a little parking lot there. Sleep right there, deliver first thing Friday morning. And then I uh, guess I'll call and see if they got something short to do. But I, I think I'll be going home then because we have a wedding to go to on Saturday. One of my wife's friends is getting married, and uh, I'm her plus one. An excuse to dress up, eh? Careful if you're going on the road there, Weasel, okay? I know it's a quiet road. And that that's a dead end. There's not going to be any traffic coming from there. But I did see, because that's a dead end, it's got like a big turnaround spot over there, right? I did see a whole bunch of black marks on the pavement, which means... The local kids obviously know about this quiet road and they like to uh, come here and do burnouts. Can you blame them? I'd love to do burnouts too. But it's not a weekend, so I don't think they'll be here today. It's a Wednesday. They should be at home. Hasn't school started? They should be in school. Or college or un university. Or trade school. That's where they should be. Trade school. That makes the most sense.
All right, everybody. Thanks for hanging out with me today. Didn't do a lot of filming, but uh, we got a whole vlog out of it. We'll see you tomorrow. We'll put some freight on this trailer. We'll head back on up to Canada. I hope you join us. If you haven't already, hit that subscribe button. Go down below into my uh, d the, the description below my videos. A whole bunch of links and stuff there where you can find me on social media. There's links where you can support us if you want to as well. If you do support us on Patreon, we release the videos early there for everybody to see. Uh, other than that, I'll see you right here on YouTube tomorrow morning. Take care.